This video is supported by Clue. Hello, welcome to a special half episode of Make Thrift Buy. So I mentioned in episode 53 that I'd be doing a more customizable sports bra. And then I will also do an episode 53 and a half, which will show you the harder, but much more customizable way to do this. Well, this is that video and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So let's jump right into it. So today I'm going to be turning this t-shirt here into a sports bra style crop top. First, we need to start off by making a pattern. Now, I used a tight fitting singlet top to base my pattern off. This singlet top here eventually became the rainbow crop top that you saw at the end of episode 53. But before I cut it up, I made a pattern out of it. So with this singlet top and some butcher's paper, I folded the singlet top in half like this so that the front was facing outwards. Then I laid it flat down onto the paper with the fold matching up with the straight edge of the paper here. And I traced around these edges. Because I wanted it to be cropped, I didn't copy the bottom of the singlet top. Instead, I drew a straight line across here 14 inches below the top of the shoulder to make the pattern shorter. And I traced it out in pencil, which you can't see on camera, so I'm just going to go over those lines in marker now. I then added a seam allowance of half an inch around the armhole, top of the shoulder strap, and the neckline. And I added a seam allowance to the side of the pattern as well. And then I drew this arrow here on the straight edge because it will indicate where I will place the pattern on the fold of the fabric later on. Then I cut around the outside lines with some scissors, and that's my front pattern piece done. I did the exact same thing for the back pattern piece, so I folded the singlet the other way so the back was facing out, laid it flat on the paper with the fold matching the straight edge of the paper, and I traced around it like this. I actually used the front pattern piece to make sure that the straps were the same width on both the front and back pieces, and that they were both the same length as well. Also, I added the same seam allowances as I did on the front piece, and then I cut it out. So now I have both the pattern pieces that I need, the front and the back piece, and it's time to get started cutting out fabric. So this thrifted t-shirt is what I'm going to be using for my fabric. So first I cut the front and the back pieces apart by cutting up the side seams and around the armholes. Starting on the front because I want this logo to be on the front of my sports bra, I folded it in half right sides together like this, making sure that the fabric was all flat underneath. And then I placed the pattern piece on top with this fold arrow pointing towards the fold of the fabric. Then I cut around this. To cut it out, I just put a bunch of heavy items on top of the paper and fabric to hold them down. And I went around the edges with my rotary cutter. So initially I wanted to keep the original neckline as you can see me doing here, but in the end that got too complicated so I did cut it off. I then did the same for the back, fold it in half, right sides together, place the back pattern down on the fold and cut it out. So here's my cut out front and back pieces. To sew them together I placed the back piece down, facing right sides up, and then I put the front piece on top of it, right sides down. And I sewed them together at the shoulders and the side seams. Now you want to use a thread in a matching color for this. This was the closest color thread that I had on hand, but this one here, if it hadn't almost run out, would have been better. So I sewed the shoulders and the side seams together using a standard zigzag stitch like this. Next, I'm applying elastic to the top's armholes and the neck hole. So with the top inside out, I roughly measured out how much elastic I would need to go around the armhole so I wouldn't go drastically over or under this amount and have a loose or a too tight armhole, which I did by placing the elastic at the bottom of the armhole and then stretching it gently to the top, then doubling this measurement. Then to apply the elastic, and I'm just showing you the armhole application, however, it's the same for the neckline as well. I put the armhole underneath my sewing machine like this, then I put the elastic on top at the edge of the fabric. I put the sewing machine's foot down, did a little back stitch to keep them in place. Then I gently stretched the elastic like this and I slowly did a zigzag stitch right in the middle of the elastic, attaching the elastic along the fabric's edge. I continued gently stretching the elastic as I went all the way around the armhole until I got back around to the start.
When I got back to where I started, I clipped the elastic off and I sewed the two ends of the elastic together on top of the armhole like this. To finish off the armhole, I folded it over once like this, so this is kind of like doing a hem, except there's elastic inside, and I sewed around it once again using a zigzag stitch. I also continued to stretch it gently so that there was no bunching in the fabric. You'll actually be able to feel how much you'll need to stretch it this time around. This only really makes sense once you're actually sewing, but yeah. Stretch it the same amount all the way around the armhole and you're done. Now, once I'd done that for both armholes and for the neckline, I just needed to attach an elastic band at the bottom. So I showed you all how to do this in much better detail in episode 53. So I'm just gonna go through it really quickly here. I corded both the elastic band, which I measured to fit my waist, and the bottom of the top with pins. And then I sewed them together, right sides together, all the way around the top's bottom edge, stretching the elastic so that the pins met up. Then I unfolded the elastic and I'm done. Now you can also top stitch the elastic down like this, but that's totally up to you. I find that it doesn't really matter whether it's top stitched or not. So time for the reveal. How did I go? made three sports bras in this way. This orange one, this Marvel one, and this green one, all from old t-shirts. But you don't have to use an old t-shirt, you can use any fabric that you want as long as it's stretchy. Now, here's some tips on making it more supportive if you want to use this more as a sports bra or if you want to go bra free underneath. So you can make it tighter fitting at the sides. So when you're making your pattern, don't add a seam allowance at the sides and bring it in a little bit. You can also use a thicker elastic band and also make the top shorter so that the elastic band is just underneath your bust, kind of holding everything up. You can also copy your pattern off something with a tee back, or you can make thicker straps while you're making your pattern. And you can also make the straps a little bit shorter. And you can also use power mesh or something else similar like that as your fabric. You don't need to use an old t-shirt, or if you want to use an old t-shirt, you could line it with power mesh fabric as well. But if you're above a C cup, or you wanna do some really intense workouts with this thing, you're probably still better off with an actual sports bra because they're made with these fancy materials that wick moisture away and they're also made with this super fancy equipment, which is beyond the scope of home sewers. Still, give it a go. Worst comes to worst, you end up with a cute, fashionable crop top. And if you've got any more useful tips, leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sadly, it's coming to the end of the warm season here in Australia. So I am packing all of my crop tops and sports bras away for the next few months. But I knew that a lot of you watching are from the Northern Hemisphere. So I hope you can make good use out of this tutorial. If you do, I'd love to see the results. Um, tag them with DIY Annika on Instagram to show them to me. Now it's time for some period talk. Uh, what Annika? What? This video took a left turn. Yeah, but if you're a person who gets their period, I recommend that you stick around for the next part. This video is sponsored by an app called Clue. Clue tracks your period, and I've personally been using the app myself for almost two years, and I think that it is such a useful application, which is why I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. Now, Clue, C-L-U-E, is a free app that you can get on the iOS and the Android app stores. And since I started to use it almost two years ago, I actually don't know how I would live without this app. I have a lot of unrelated health stuff going on. If you follow my social media accounts, you know all about that. But knowing when my period is going to turn up is pretty useful because it's just one less thing that I have to worry about. I also take a lot of medications that mess around with my hormones. So having this information for myself and for my doctor is just really useful. And the app is free. Guys, it's free. I freaking love this app. Okay, so I wanna show you all how this app actually works. So we can't really avoid this. You're all going to know my cycle now. Cool. Ooh, boy, okay, so I actually didn't realize how close I was to my next period. 
and now I know to be prepared. Now there's actually reminders that you can turn on um, so that you know when your next period is coming. I'm gonna turn these on now. Now I find this reminder here really useful. These clouds are telling me from tracking my cycle for the past two years that I'm probably about to start having PMS. So when I'm randomly crying at babies on TV and I don't know why, I check the app and then I'm like, oh yeah, PMS, cool, cool, cool. I'm not losing my mind, it's just on flow. So this app has been rated number one by a bunch of doctors and top researchers, and I've used it in my own doctor's appointments as well. And it can also show you when you're most fertile if you're trying to get pregnant. And it also now comes with a pill tracking feature as well, if you're on the pill. One of the best things that I found with this app is that it gives you a lot of good quality information about what's considered normy, normy? <laughs> about what's considered normal and healthy with your period. I've actually learned some stuff on here that I never got taught in health classes at school. So when I'm freaking out that something isn't normal, the app usually tells me that it is, but it also does say when you should probably go and see a doctor as well. Oh yeah, and I don't use this feature myself um, because I'm generally a private person, says the girl who's sharing this with literally hundreds of thousands of people. But you can share your cycle with other people as well. So, you know, the people you live with or your partner, your best friend, whatever, which can be pretty useful. So yeah, I have a link to download Clue in the description box below, or you can find it on your app store by just typing in Clue. Thank you for supporting the companies that support my channel. I'm very selective with my sponsorship opportunities and I always believe in the companies that I bring to you guys. So you know that my promotion of this app is legit. Clue rocks. The end. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for making these videos possible. To become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.